have a chicken I'm going to cut up, but I want to talk a little bit about knives. Most of the knives that you might ever need, you're going to find in a... Um, don't spend, you know, umpteen dollars on a Henkel and, you know, get all chef-y. Um, most things you can find practically in your thrift store. Uh, just keep looking if you have a carbon style blade or a good, uh, good um, sharpenable stainless steel blade, they're great. Uh, this I got about 20 years ago in the military. This one here was about this long and it broke off. And I when I have a paring knife, I don't like to have hold the little end of it. I like to have use my entire hand. So I uh, took my grinder and I, I whittled it down so I have a nice paring knife that I can do that with. Uh, this was given to me. It's a great cleaver. It's got great balance and an angle that cuts and it's sharp, 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 sharp. And this is a fairly common knife that you can get at any superstore. Right? I like it because when I cut potatoes and stuff, it's got these ridges in here that allows it not to be so sticky. Um, so that's just a little bit about knives. Find something that you like that you can sharpen. Don't use Ginsu knives with... I wonder if he has one. Uh, don't use, you know, blades that have this, this kind of serrated edge on it. Because if you're going to do any quick cutting, what happens with these Ginsu style knives with all the serrated edges is good for cutting steak but when you cut quickly it 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 angles right so you if it angles the wrong way you're gonna cut off a tip of your fingers and, and, I, and I, they, I really don't like them I like to have blades that I can sharpen so I'm gonna get these out of the way uh, I just want to comment about this uh, about chicken in general if you notice nowadays, um, meats are going right through the roof. This is a nine dollar, seven, seven, eight, nine dollar chicken, depending where you go. It's pre-cooked. If you get a raw chicken that you have to um, put in the oven, it's going to cost you sometimes twice as much to get it raw. I, I don't understand the concept, but you know that's the way it is. So for my chicken pot pie, I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to take it piece by piece, make little blocks out of them, like I did with my potatoes. I earlier cooked some potatoes, and I put them in bite-sized pieces. I let it slightly overcook so that it creates also a bit of a um, thick, stewy feel when I make the pot pie. Okay, so that's that. Keep the gel tint stuff too, I, that it cooks in. And wash your hands before you start, so you're nice and clean. Take all the meat off, off like that. So you basically have a deboned chicken. See, if I had something good to talk about, you wouldn't be as bored as you are right now. Right? That's what editing's for. Oh yeah, I can edit. I have to find an editor, I guess. Jada, would you like to learn how? <laughs> what I do is I, I, I have, I cut them in little cube chunks, bite chunks, that, uh, mm -hmm. I'm doing the breast right now because it's an easy way to show it. And uh, I basically get it so I, I can comfortably cube it. In bite sized pieces. So I had my chicken there, that in there, which is ready to be heated up and cooked and what I do is I will add different ingredients together to make the pot pie so technically it's all ready to go all that all that has to happen is that the that the uh, the crust needs to heat up and cook and then it's pretty much ready to go uh, this is just technically leftover steaks that the steak that I cubed and the chicken you know about 
And what I'm going to do, I put both of these on high, um, and I added some of the leftover grease that was on the bottom of the chicken, the au jus stuff, and I'm going to split them up here. So I've got, I had about a, a cup and a half of onions. Um, we ran out of garlic. I didn't know we ran out of garlic, so what I'm going to do is use some organic or garlic powder on both. And as you can see, I just have a light kind of covering. Make sure we have a... And I'm just going to split these onions. I was going to... I love mushrooms, so I didn't bring any today, I forgot. So we're going to let those cook. And I'm let the uh, oil absorb. Garlic and this, this is nice. You might want to have a little bit of that chicken fat and gravy mix or whatever you call it. it Come to the cooked chicken. It may not be healthy, but do I care? Mm -mm. This is for the steak stuff. So I'm going to do, I've got some celery I'm going to mix. There's about a half cup in there. And about a a little bit more in this one, so about a half cup per side of celery. Okay, I'm gonna let those dry up a bit. What I do a lot of the time is I'll add a little bit of water, so it'll spread easier. And it's still both on high. This one doesn't seem to have a very hot. Okay, this is starting to stick, so I'm going to turn this down to about half. Get rid of the plastic. So you can see that the liquid is going to split it off, and it's just basically a uh, semi cooking onion here. So I'll let those sit for a little bit. I'll let them simmer. I'll bring this down. On this side, I'm going to put uh, my steak. Just let it left over. And on this side, I'm going to put the chicken that I chopped up, and hopefully it'll fit all in here. You know what? I'm actually going to take some of it out because I think it's going to be too much. So that uh, I'm going to need to make some chicken salad, chicken salad with it. So I'm going to start mixing and heating this up. Okay, I got the oven preheating. Okay. okay. And I'm going to put the piece of the steak in this side. And let them heat up. What temperature? Pardon me? For the oven. It's at about half. The whole thing is you don't want to burn anything, right? So just heat them up. I haven't added any spices to it yet. As you can see. Okay. This is one cup of water. What I'm doing here is I'm taking one cup of water and um, about two tablespoons of chicken bouillon. That's about two tablespoons, okay? And I put it in there, and I mix it in. So it's basically like a soup base. Actually, I'm going to add just a little bit more. So let's say two and a half tablespoons. Our, our meal is quite a bit. Okay? So mix that in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my spices in here. So what I want to do for my uh, chicken one is I want to put a little bit, just a hint, of ginger powder. Um, you don't have to use any of these. I mean, typically people just add salt and pepper. There's a touch of cumin, just a sprinkle. Remember, it smells like sweaty dog and a, and a touch of a, a organic turmeric. You don't need to do this again. Salt and pepper will su su suffice. 
but it's only a little bit. Okay, I'll mix it around in there. And then what I do is I add, I didn't want such a thick cream, but I'm going to put about okay, half of this into there. Okay, it's cream. Okay, and about a tablespoon of flour. Okay. That's it, okay. Take my whisk with this warm water. Cold water is better, of course. And what I'm going to do is stir my food. So the steak's been heated up. The, the chicken's nice and heated up. Okay. So don't hard fry it, just make sure that it's still about half and still nicely warming up. What I'm going to do is add some potatoes in here. Okay, add some potatoes in there for the steak pie. I'm going to go to the fridge, fridge grab some of the, uh, the mixed veg in about a Oh, about three quarters of a cup to a cup, depending on taste. Add some uh, mixed veg in there. Okay, that's about a cup, just under a cup each. And for the chicken one, what I'm going to do is take this cup of water and a half, about a quarter cup of cream, and I'm going to add it to the chicken. Okay, and, and spice it how you like it. Um, I'm going to turn this down for a minute and I'm going to mix this nicely around. Remember the what the heaping tablespoon of uh, flour does is it helps turn it into a thicker kind of sauce, right? So I'm just going to mix that around. Now remember in the uh, soup base with no MSG, the soup base has sodium in it, or salt, so remember when you do add more to it, um, that you've already have it part, partly salted. So I'm going to probably top this off with salt and pepper, and with this one here, I'm going to now take a Keeping for the steak one, I'm going to take a soup base without MSG and uh, take a about a cup of warm water. As you notice, I didn't remove the bouillon from here because it really doesn't matter. Take about that much. Much more. Mix it in. This is your uh, soup base. When you get gravy mix, all that it really is is soup base uh, mixed with uh, flour or tap or cornstarch. So, if you get your own uh, soup base, actually, that I think it needs a bit more. But I'm going to add some cream to it. And with this, mix that around there. I think it needs a little more. So it looks like I did them like a tea, you know, teaspoon and a half. Mix it up a bit. Um, that's already going to fill that, isn't it? So I'm going to take some of this, put it over here, put this in here. Mix it around. I'm a hands-on guy, as you can tell. Eh? It seems a little bizarre, but that's what I do. Okay, so technically, this is nice and hot, and this is basically ready to go. So what I'm going to do is turn this up again, and prepare this. Okay, doesn't that look like the inside of a chicken pot pie? 
Okay, the steak. What I'm going to do is I've, I'm, oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to put in the uh, flour. So this is not uh, recommended because it'll glom together. So I'm going to quickly mix it so it doesn't turn into little beads of yuckiness. It is sort of cool, okay. So, because we want this to kick, this is already kicked as you notice, it's gotten quite a bit thicker in there. Notice how I cook on the fly, I wonder if I, I'm embarrassing myself. Okay. So here we have the, uh, the... And you know the mixed veg that goes in there? Just needs to be slightly warmed up. It, it's already pre-cooked, so we're blanched. Now, what I'm going to do? Take my little paring knife, and I am going to uh, put chunks of egg in the uh, in this pie. Okay, but I'm going to. Whoops, wrong one. I'm putting it all in here. You may say, how? gross but you have to eat it to believe it okay quarter it up cut it all and the, the egg still is nice and slightly warm so I got four eggs that are mashable in here okay and I just I I, I, I don't obliterate it I try to you know have a Sort of a little bit bigger than bite-sized chunks. These are came from a farm, these eggs. From my friend Glenn Chapman. So there's a nice thick layer, actually, of, uh, of egg on the bottom. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook this till it kicks. Because you don't want it too watery. So I'm going to turn this up, and when it kicks, it means it'll be thick like this. If you notice that the uh, the mix in here looks just like what it looked like on the inside of a chicken pot pie. Okay. So I'm going to heat this up, and it will simmer, and all of a sudden it'll kick into uh, the flour will kick in with the liquid and the cream, which I use, and. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nice and tasty. Okay, do I have any left? Stick a tad more cream in there. I mean, it's rich, right? It's not necessarily the healthiest thing for you. Well, it is healthy. Who am I, who am I kidding? Okay. So there we go. And there's the steak one. And it's heating up. And you'll, you'll notice the runniness will disappear. And if I've put enough flour in it, it will kick. Now, take a look at that. Notice how it's turning into a kind of a thick kind of stew. Okay? And you could serve this like a stew. It's a lot cheaper than getting Chef Boyardee stuff. And a lot more tasty and a lot healthier. So, my steak and egg pie is here. Okay, I'm sure, I don't even know if there's a recipe like that anywhere. I'm going to turn off the sauce. I might have too much, but I'm going to fill this up with, uh, notice how thick, it's not runny anymore. It's got this nice, thick stew consistency. Makes your mouth water. If you could smell it, you'd be going, mmm, mmm, mmm. So there you go. That's the steak and egg pie. The eggs are on the bottom. It's sort of a surprise for people who have no idea what's coming. But it is actually quite tasty. I'm going to take, and this is all ready to go, this stuff, right? So I'm going to put the, uh, the chicken pot pie. This is a special request from my friend Bruce because he wanted chicken pot pie. Smells absolutely. I can hardly wait. Shim magnifique. Just beautiful. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
take the tops that I pre-prepared, and as you, as, as you know, they, they come out very nicely. I'll lay this one on top of here. And so technically, just remember these are ready to eat, right? Um, it only takes less than a half hour for, and remember what I did with the water? Grab some water. What I do is I just take the edges a little bit put some water on because it, it, it makes them a little bit sticky okay and I crimp the ends so that you've got a technically a bit of a pie I try if you want you can bring the the ends over over top okay now this is not a you know a, a loris not a high end this is home grown Practical. Do you notice how I flip the ends over and I'm bringing them out and I'm allowing that to be part of the crust instead of wasting it by keeping it down? There we go. And then I merge them together. Okay, remember are that are this trying, crust has a lot of, pardon me? Are you trying to think of the word Martha Stewart? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, if, I don't know if, I, if my video goes out there, I don't know if I can use her name. <laughs> Martha Stewart, my wife loves Martha Stewart. She looks at all her videos, but she eats my food. <laughs> so, don't worry, I imagine someone else. <laughs> actually, that's not really funny, John. I, I, I laughed because I didn't understand what you were actually saying until right now. So, I fold the ends over, okay? There's already a lot of butter in there. Like, like I said, this recipe has two cups of flour. It has um, approximately two-thirds cup of um, butter in it, three three uh, teaspoons or of, uh, what do you call it, uh, of baking powder, some salt to taste. So it will have a nice kind of uh, flavor to it. And this pie is not only the top, it's the top and underneath. You could glaze it over with uh, more butter, but I'm not going to. Doesn't that look freaking fantastic? Okay. Do you need to do slits on the top? No. You want it totally enclosed. So I'm going to put these in the oven. And give them a bit of separation. And... Turn them down. Okay, it's preheated to, to it was preheated to 425. When I opened it and closed it, the heat came down. But it would probably come down about 350 is where I'm actually leaving it. So, in uh, I would say a half hour, it should be ready. So at quarter after, it's in a quarter to and a quarter after we'll. Check it out and see if we have a meal. Okay, they've been in for half an hour um, at 3.50. I'm turning it off now. And, oh my gosh, this is what they look like. Simple but beautiful, eh? Wow, I almost don't want to cut into them. So as you can see, I the lipping over this has come out a little bit, just fine, it's like a normal chicken pot pie, nicely bubbly. So hopefully it tastes really good, and we'll serve it up. And on one of the bowls, I'll uh, show you what it looks like. Okay, this is the beef one. I'm just gonna. The nice thing about a lot of butter that's in the uh, uh, mix of the pie. It, it's nice because what happens is it actually doesn't stick to to the pie to the uh, oh, darn it to the sorry so it's nice so it's got the egg and stuff in it that's one piece there and I'm going to so it's really a nice thing that there's a bit of butter because one of the hard problems with uh, Real pot pies is it's always a complaint of, uh, you know, sticking things pot. sticking to the pot. That's what, what the 
the butter solves in this situation. Do you want to heat the beef first and then grab some chicken? This will be a chicken one. I'll try chicken and then we'll come back later. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, so that's what the chicken one looks like. It has a bit yellowness because of the turmeric. And this is about the beef one. Okay. Thank you.